King's speech has happened, new yeah. government as we speak, July 24, yes. section 21, mm. no false eviction. Yeah, yeah. What's your view on that? Hi everyone, welcome to the Next Level Finance Podcast, episode three in series two. And we've got a special guest today, you, we can see her, Maureen Ogbu. She's a lawyer with an entrepreneurial mindset and she helps entrepreneurs both running businesses and landlords, which is going to be big here. So you're going to be getting a lot of fun. Nice meeting you. Nice Hi. meeting you again, Z. Get ready for the fun. We've got Maureen here and she's going to give us so much value, as I said in the intro. And trust me, she will live up to expectations. <laughs> um, Maureen, first of all, so well, thanks for that you've come down to see us. I'm oh, really thankful for welcome. that. Yeah, and it's a beautiful welcome. day as well. Currently in the UK, if you're watching around the world, I know we get people from everywhere watching it. We're going to do classic style. We're going to be talking about the different aspects. And always, always, we would love to learn about the person we have got on our podcast. Of course. Maureen. So tell us about your bit of your journey because you've had a bit of an amazing journey yeah. uh, as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Give a bit of insight to the audience what all the value they're going to get okay. uh, and especially some legal insights because everyone knows they need some. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. So I've been a lawyer for over 20, 20 plus years and I don't look it, but who knows? <laughs> of course. Somehow you um, kept the youth gene going. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I um, when I first started, I started off working part time with my normal nine to five job, and then started my, my own practice. And gosh, there was some challenges to start off with. <laughs> didn't actually have a clue about business. Didn't know how to run a business. Didn't know about finances, how to value your your fees, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then as the years have gone on particularly since the pandemic, I've realized that actually I, I needed help. I needed yeah. help to know exactly what I'm doing. I'm a good lawyer, but not a good business person, was anyway. Uh, and now... Just to unpack that, it's a transition. I think a lot of entrepreneurs I meet, they're always trying to beat themselves up and all this. Mm -hmm. It happens to everybody. It yeah. doesn't matter. That includes me in the bracket, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. you, you're going in, it's this gradual always knowledge uplift because you've got to wear all the hats we get so many entrepreneurs on uh, on the podcast mm. and all the different aspects we do yeah. and they all have a common thing because there's certain areas that be strong and they normally you know in the skill set that they've worked in employment that tends to be their strength yeah. what they're bringing as their product and offering mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but then they have to learn all the other things yes. and i think that's what you're probably exactly about, right? exactly all the things so from the finances the accounts the the um the techie things the secretarial thing i was <laughs> literally everything <laughs> you wow. can't be everything to all people and still do a good job so so essentially as the years have gone on i've realized that okay i need to delegate a lot more find the right people to help me so that it frees me up to do the things that actually I'm really good at, I enjoy doing and generates decent income into the business. On that point, and I think this is quite important for entrepreneurs to really understand and it's good value to the audience, yeah. right? What is the key things that really you enjoy? Because that drives everything else. So Absolutely. if you said one or two things, what would be the things that yeah. you're like, I really enjoy doing that? I really enjoy the client facing work. So I really enjoy actually helping the clients I also enjoy the networking, so I love people, so I enjoy um, going out to, to just network, get to know people, see how they run their business or if they're in property, see how they, have, they run their property portfolio, understand the, the people behind the business, that's mm. so key, and then see who I gel with the most. And majority of the people that come to me actually are people that have a similar mindset to myself. There may be people that don't, they may have heard of me or they may have seen me on social media or they may have been referred so they, they've never really worked with me and um, when we get talking they get to know a bit about me I get to know a bit about them and then of course if there's a if there's a like yeah, and trust yeah. there then then we work together I think you've put it in a nutshell and it's that transition that you've had to do from being part of someone else's a machine or being a cog yes. in a machine as they all say yes. right to 
you are the machine. Mm -hmm. and if you don't turn up, the machine's not on. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's what happens. Yeah? It's like yeah. pressing the button. Yeah, 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 and I think yeah. these are the big drivers. And I think a lot of people find that quite hard and quite overwhelming. Mm. And you told me, like, uh, off air when we're having a good old lunch, and you see yeah. hospitality is always big. <laughs> Absolutely. He fed me really well, guys. So. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I'll pay a letter for that one. Um, but I think one of the things that people really um, find is that they have to start becoming a master of more than what they just do. Yes. Or have, as you rightly said, mm. learn about delegation. Mm. And I think that's probably one of the biggest challenges, Absolutely, isn't it? Absolutely, yes. You've, you know, you did the, you've been running a business seven years and you said yeah. you've really become serious in the last few years yes. because you've understood that transition. Mm. What was the big dropping point for you? You okay, know, when the, you said, oh, point. the coins dropped. Yeah. That's what, yeah. What's made the difference? I, I think, to be honest, it was during COVID. So yeah. COVID happened, uh, same as everyone else, all businesses, law was no different. Um, obviously, I run a very small practice in London, very niche. Yeah. Um, I, I had this moment where I kind of, it was in human nature, I kind of Just panicked. Just unpack that. Mm. When you say niche, because all this audience love it, yeah. what's the couple of key things that you do okay. on the niche? So basically, I help property investors, landlords, and uh, business owners save money, basically, protect their assets. That's uh, the big one, yeah. because people don't realise if you haven't got a good person behind you especially a legal person yes yeah they, they they your protection because the assets are what going to drive your revenue exactly. and also the money that you get in your pocket Absolutely. and if you haven't got those protected yeah especially when it all goes south <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> then you don't have anything you know you just yeah, yeah. I, I think the other thing that you said is you know those are the challenges from when you're going into the business uh, mm -hmm. and you know I, I think we're going to talk a bit more in detail about mm -hmm. them. but I think one of the things when you as an individual I think people don't realize we're an individual first right mm -hmm. the business might have a name but the person driving the name in this Absolutely. case Maureen Ogbe, right? yes yeah. yeah what 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 things have affected your you as an individual I think we were talking about one of the things was uh, limped in beliefs. Oh, yes. Yeah. How did you overcome that? And I think you were talking about self-development and things I, I, like this. Absolutely. Gosh, when you first start something, particular, as everybody can see, of course, I'm an ethnic person yeah. living in Britain, uh, born and bred in Britain. Um, you have certain beliefs when you are gr growing up and studying, yeah. whether it's your race, whether it's your gender, or whether it's where you live. Yeah. Um, you have certain things that informs your decisions in life. Mm. So I had to overcome the fact, actually I had to get out of my own head and think, okay, it's not always about gender, it's not always about race. Yeah. Um, you've got to just keep challenging yourself. And that's what I had to do. I mean, even when I, where I studied, my first degree I studied outside of London, which a lot of my friends that grew up in London was like, oh God, what are you doing going out of London? There are no black people. I said, yeah, there are, there are. <laughs> Whatever you want to do in life, you've got to get out of that limiting belief and just if you don't believe in yourself, no one else will. If yeah. you don't invest in yourself, no one else will. You have to do everything that you want to do yourself first mm. for other people to then see, actually, do you know, I quite like him, I quite like her. Uh, we're of the similar belief, similar mindset, in order for me to give them the leg up. Yeah, and I think one of the golden nuggets I took out there, apart from obviously empowering yourself, is also the people that you surround yourself Absolutely. with. And we see that on both sides for yourself and your clientele yes. and that's what the limiting beliefs come yes. because everyone but sometimes they do it without even knowing mm. they people limit themselves because it is all in the mindset isn't mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. i know everyone says it's a cliche but it, it really is yeah and it's that's how do difference. you break out of that even you weird there is challenges mm. anyone telling everyone knows me i and uh, many others right i know there's challenges being mm. a minority because of myself mm -hmm. being well, from a minority background but mm. are you going to let that hold yourself back because mm. we're mm. in the uk it's how do you wear that and make it work for you mm -hmm. and mm. i think you're you're on that journey right? oh absolutely Z. i mean and also the other thing that I had to kind of say to myself is all the gifts that you've you have yeah. because we're all but we're, we're whatever race you are you know gender whatever you're you're born with a, a purpose in life so you've got to then say to yourself that isn't isn't that bigger than what you're saying to yourself because you're yeah. denying others the gifts that you have because there are people that will naturally gravitate towards the people that will naturally gravitate towards me um, and it doesn't matter what they look like. It's because of the essence of who you are. They think, I really like that, this person. I trust them. They don't know why. 
there's something I believe in energy so you've hit the nail on the head that you know. I, I think you've hit the nail on the head what you send out mm -hmm. right sometimes mm -hmm. it's not even words yeah yeah it's that energy and how you do it yeah you know and I said one of the things when we were talking and you know we were introduced and we had a little zoom and I was like you got a lot of energy <laughs> <laughs> which is a good thing, right? Well, it conveys uh, well on Zoom. it does, but it's also <laughs> being able to have a laugh and a smile because yeah. if you don't have that, and I always say that to my team and everything else, how you build relationships with people, mm. you know, even if you're great at something, if you can't build relationships or convey a message or make them feel good, yes, yeah. you're just, you're going to end up on not a great place, no. not a great opportunity, and I think no. that's the biggest challenge, isn't absolutely. it? Absolutely, absolutely. I, I think yeah. that nicely leads us onto another thing, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things that when we were talking that you were like, you know, one of the big challenges have is being a professional lawyer mm -hmm. and a lady yes right uh, <laughs> if i'm allowed to say that i'm just saying putting out there is that challenge of meeting person one of your life partners oh, and we were having that yeah, conversation absolutely, right okay yeah. because i think i think it's quite hard and mm. the insight you were giving me because mm. obviously we have different aspects yeah. guys have different aspects yeah. uh, ladies have different aspects yes, yeah. and it is a big challenge. It is and a you challenge. said, you know, you would want to have a little discussion because I know other people watching, yeah. especially the ladies watching out there, <laughs> or the guys who are trying to get a good lady who help us who's got, got something about themselves. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. This is a big challenge and it's it, getting it bigger and harder. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it is. I mean, most entrepreneurs have challenges anyway, but when you couple that with being a female entrepreneur, yeah. You're trying to make an impact on the world, uh, fulfill your purpose and, and just make a difference. Sometimes as ladies, as you're building up the career and the business, whatever it may be, you may not necessarily make enough time to deal with the other side. Because if you mm. think about the percentage of time that we put into our studies and our careers, if we did 50% of that, I had to also think about that myself recently and say gosh you know okay I'm, I'm building th this practice this business how about if I also made a bit more time how am I going to do it so nobody can do it for you you have all the advisors that will advise you ultimately you're going to live you're going to live in your own shoes you're going to live your life and um, I'm finding ways to, 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 to make it better because ultimately all the money in the world is not really going to give you mm that life partner love i'm big on love i love people so i'm big on i just want to share that part of my life with somebody so any professional whether you're a dentist doctor lawyer we're no different we're all the yeah, same yeah. it's just different Didn't professions mention accountants, different there, accountants. Anyway. yeah accountants as well <laughs> types of <laughs> types <laughs> advisors, we want types like, advisors. Anyway. you know you're a professional female entrepreneur yeah. we all have similar challenges it's just about how we overcome it um, overcome them even and um, those challenges what, the, yeah. the, the challenge I guess is you know obviously you're you know you're a person who's successful oh, you're thank you. you know you're <laughs> and you, you're seeing intelligence because being a lawyer is not easy <laughs> right and to be a qualified lawyer you're obviously uh, spend a lot of time investment it's that trade-off as well with time mm. because you have to as you said you've got two things one trying to find someone that you feel comfortable and you know you can share your journey with yeah. and secondly the trade-off of how much time you have to invest as an entrepreneur and how much time you have to invest yeah and I think yeah. what talking to yourself and uh, you know I've been fortunate to speak to many female entrepreneurs mm -hmm. they they find that is quite a challenge because yeah. rightly or wrongly they feel it's harder to you know um, assert themselves mm -hmm. in the business world mm -hmm. they feel there's some challenges there mm -hmm. uh, and then it's once you assert yourself are you sending the messages to people or the guys who, or if, if that is who you're going to mm. transition what, mm -hmm. for your life partner mm. yeah is that going to be putting them off and what do they want and it's a lot of mm. stuff and yeah. i think it's sometimes simpler for guys in that sense because yes. we we don't have to probably think of it that Absolutely, way whereas yeah. ladies have to get yeah. that balance are you yeah. are you overpowering because yeah. people have different different yeah, perspectives have different perspectives how, how have you yeah. found that part yeah I mean it's finding the balance and again it comes down to a uh, lot of self-talk de personal development because just like we're learning about how to run our businesses how to get to the next level how to get better yeah. equally 
myself included, as well as others that I know, we all we have the, these discussions about investing in other parts of your life because as humans, yeah. we're made up of different things. It's yeah. not just one dimensional. Because if you're a female that's just focused solely and you're and you are looking for a life partner, focus on just the business, you're going to end up sixty, seventy, and you don't have that you're not fulfilled Mm. i mean i find it interesting when some some females i know that are really successful say yeah i know i don't don't really need anybody i'm I'm okay but think about 60s 70s 80s you know we're not meant to be alone in life um that's my belief in any way everybody's different so finding that balance is i had to kind of learn new skills so that i'm not i'm a entrepreneur at work and you're, you know, lead, leading a team. But um, outside of that, I'm more in. Yeah. Woman, girl, whatever title you want to give yeah, it. I'm yeah. fun. I like to have fun. I like to have, uh, laugh. And I'm, I think I'm quite a caring person. So, yeah, you, you just have to differentiate that. as Because unfortunately, like it, like it or not, the stakes are a little bit higher yeah. for women entrepreneurs. Mm. If you're married, you need that that support, and it's a balance actually uh, between being a wife, a mum, and an entrepreneur. Yeah, I I, I, I yeah. see this, and do you know what? Um, this is where, you know, uh, for ladies they look at it very differently, and it's really nice to get that perspective because, mm-hmm. you know, for guys, you know, we we have our challenges, but we 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 are sort of have to be very focused on the career entrepreneur mm. aspect and the the family aspect for us I, I know everyone watches or follows on LinkedIn and social yeah. media <laughs> right I try to talk about this balance yeah, and yeah, yeah. it's never it never feels like you get it right but you do your best yeah, indeed, and yes. I think from a lady's perspective it's also quite big because it's a, it's a huge investment because mm. you know if you're having a family that's potentially a bit of time out mm-hmm. as mm. well um, and that's something you have to map in and there's yeah. so much stuff more yeah, for yeah. as a guy yeah. yes there is time that you've got to put in for the mm, children mm. but you can do it in a different way you can do it in a different way and yeah. i think for a lady it's not the same yeah. because and you need that environment it sounds like from what you yeah, said yeah absolutely i mean it's, it's down it's down to you as the female entrepreneur i think to plan unfortunately in life we have to plan things and this mm. is no different if you fail to plan you plan to fail, as they say. So yeah. in relationships, you're just going to be. And I've, I've, all, I've, I don't exclude myself from it. I'm not immune to it. But it's about being aware. Yeah. You know what? Being awake. <laughs> so I'm awake. I'm alive to the to the um, to, to that particular um, to topic. So I kind of learn. I'm mm-hmm. still learning different skills so that I get better at that side of that part of my life as well. Because ultimately all the successes in life is not really going to mean very much if you don't have a life partner to share, to share them with. I think you've hit the nail on the head. I think that's for many people. I know there's people may disagree with that, but I think generally most people will be, I think, mm. agreeing with that. Mm-hmm. I think one of the other things when we're in the conversation really yeah. is location. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, you mentioned, obviously, <laughs> you know, and I hear this because I'm, I've been fortunate, you know, my wife's from up north, mm-hmm. if I'm allowed to say. Yeah, up uh, north, Manchester, Yorkshire. Uh, Manchester, oh, Bolton oh. sides, yeah, right? Okay. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I've got family of all over the country and from abroad, mm. a bit like yourself. Um, so I, I've, not always had this material location. I went to university out when we went up north yeah. to the Midlands actually. Yeah, do. Yeah, okay. How have you found the location challenges? Because it sounds like a lot of people are very, especially if they're from London, very mm, London centric. Yes. And did you find that was a big, big thing, especially from yeah. your circle of friends yeah, and your, yeah, I mean, your, uh, your community? Ab- absolutely. I mean, my, my um, in fact, I did my very first degree in Manchester, funnily enough. I left London wow. to, to go. Yeah, I studied in Manchester and then I came back again to London How did you and did find some that? more studying. Compared to loved London. it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Because I'm somebody that's very um, I'm very curious about the world and about yeah. people. So I made I make friends very easily. So for me it was oh okay, first first year uni, meeting new people, wow. you know, freshest week. <laughs> you get to meet different people, right? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. Ah, I was in my element, meeting different people, different countries that, that came over to study here and wow. then subsequently went went back. 
So I, I loved it. I'm not scared of new adventures, the opportunities. So I just see opportunities. That's the way. The glass is always half full with me. Do you, yeah. do you know what? You've hit the nutshell. I also see a glass half full, but there is people to see half empty. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I think it's down to your own mindset, um, but it seems like you've embraced the location yes. challenges yeah. and thinking of all the different opportunities where mm -hmm. some people feel I can only stick in this bit. Mm. And I, I, I feel my person a bit like what you're saying yeah. is limiting your beliefs, it, oh isn't gosh, it? And it's it limiting limits you so your, much. Yeah. your experiences. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, every part of the UK where I've lived in, um, I've ended up making good friends and we're still in contact, what, 20 something years ago wow. when I studied, uh, you kind of, I, I like to say I can pick up the phone and speak to them and say, I'm coming up north or I'm coming up here. You know, I did my bar in Wales, yeah. Cardiff. Wow. I left England actually, <laughs> not just leaving London this time. <laughs> wow, wow. And I remember my friends had a, like a send off meal party. Wow. Say, so, oh, Quite, you're so brave. You just come back from Manchester. You just come back from Liverpool, and now you're going up to you're actually leaving England to go to Wales. I said, yeah, I can learn a bit of Welsh while I'm there. <laughs> Who knows? And then they said, oh, you, you might come back with a Welsh husband. I said, well, that might not be a bad thing at all. <laughs> so, I, I think it, it comes down to your experiences, isn't it, and yeah. being open-minded. No, it's that's fantastic. It's quite refreshing. I'm sure the audience are loving this, <laughs> right? The bit I want to now talk about is some of the business challenges mm. and. It's really quite interesting uh, when I speak to entrepreneurs, right, how they tackle that switch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How did you tackle? Because you, you mentioned to me about um, mentors mm -hmm. and coaches yeah. and investing into those. Yeah. yeah. How did that experience run so for entrepreneurs who want to accelerate their business growth sure. and things like this? Sure. If I knew what I know now, definitely getting a mentor or a coach, somebody you respect, whether it's in your field or not, uh, somebody that's maybe a, f a few steps ahead or 10 steps ahead even, somebody that's done what you're looking to do it makes life so much easier because you're not having to reinvent the wheel. I didn't have, I didn't have that or I think if I knew that I could actually source it, even if I had to pay for a mentor, yeah. just, just get that person in, it will make my journey so much more, um, a lot easier. Uh, a lot quicker and certainly you get you start making your money a lot quicker as well because you, you just don't know what you don't know when you're starting out and if you have to pay for other experts that are better at certain things not necessarily a lawyer obviously because that's what you've studied for six seven years so you, you know what you're doing already in, in that respect but actually running a business um, yeah, so I had to kind of invest in myself, in my own uh, development, uh, pay for coaches and for different, different aspects. Because I think one thing that people don't realise is when you say you know everything, you don't need help. I, I can't take advice. I know I've been in the game for 25 years. That, that's actually the worst place to be in. It's when you say, Do you know, I know a bit. I'm sure there are things that I don't know. Maybe I know them, but who knows? I'm not using that knowledge to the best. I'm not putting it to best use. I'm mm. not implementing it properly. A person that's already experienced, they've done it. They've made that money that we're all chasing, right? Because let's face it, we all need money to live. And, of course, <laughs> you know, of course. And nowadays, everybody wants to kind of get that passive income that we keep hearing about. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, or get rich in six months, get, you know, be a millionaire. It's just not reality. You know, you've got to go to journeys like that. It's, you know... It, feast or famine the first few years in business as you know it, it's like that so I think getting somebody to give you that advice and where, when you're going wrong somebody to actually give you the constructive criticism yeah and not you take it personally because I never do any I can learn from everybody even a, an eight-year-old I can learn from you know and mm. um, I think that's where um, and that's why people that work with me enjoy it they enjoy teaching me because I'm like a sponge I learn and then I go and and get better and hopefully I'm hoping where I am this year next year it will be somewhere even better <laughs> than, than where I am this year you know, I, this I think time when, next you, year. when you unpack that it's a non it's a, a long a journey that's just continuing mm. and it's how do you do those little margins and that little improvement mm -hmm. as you go along and try to get that knowledge yeah I think one of the one of the things I've noticed for yourself is you're very focused. Thank so you. So there was a key areas that you were mentioning in business that you looked at mm. that you felt I need to really prioritise. Yes. Um, I think one of them that you mentioned was 
uh, finance. Yes. Right. Um, yeah. Why did you mention finance? What, what, what was the thing that worried you about finance and yeah. really thought, oh, I need to get to grips with this? Yes. I mean, you know, you open up the business, you've got your company uh, registered, you've got your business bank account, then you're ready to go. There's no... <laughs> Yeah, I think you know, a lot of we see a lot of people yeah, do yeah. that. I was I was one of them. You know, yeah, got, yeah. I've got I had the business plan. They're pages long, but I didn't really look at it. Yeah, I was yeah. not looking at the numbers. I was not getting advice as to okay, last year this is what you did. Next year, where do you want to go? This is what we have to put in place so that you get the fun. So having financial targets. Yeah. Um, it's only the last few years we've I've started kind of. Because once I realised, I don't know what I don't... There's a reason why I'm not moving. I, the, nothing is actually shifting. Yeah. You need to go out and get the advice. And if you have to pay for it, pay for it, you know? Because it'll, it pay, it'll, pay, it'll pay itself back. Yeah, you get uh, return uh, investment. Exactly. And I, I think so. the thing that you mentioned, oh, I start laughing, because so many entrepreneurs have that, which is great mm. that they're, they're embracing, they want to be entrepreneur, because it is... If you, it's going back to half full, I have empty. If you're half full, you're like, it's, I feel like I've been empowered. Yeah. But then it's like, oh, hold on. I, I have to learn a few things. <laughs> like, I, you know, I can't, there's certain things I may, may not do that I thought I could do yes. or have to do them in a certain way and I need advice and finance mm -hmm. is one of those mm -hmm. because you don't want to be doing stuff that later you find out, oh, that's cost me a lot of money. Yes. So yeah. advice around county tax, yes. cash flow, yes. how all of this is so important. Yeah, so I, I, I get that. And yeah. I think the other bit that was really quite uh, interesting is, and I, I've done this myself, um, <laughs> is that you invested in the area mm. that you want to be talking about. Mm -hmm. So you try to learn, so example, property, yes. right? So you've yeah. gone on a oh, lot I of have, property yes. training to learn about yeah. the strategy so you yeah. can then help them from a legal perspective. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, uh, with, gosh, with the amount of money that I've had to spend to diff for to different uh, property training courses, actually, different companies. Yeah. So I'm not affiliated to any company out there, <laughs> I should say. I've just gone to a few mm. uh, to up my own skills as well on, from a practical mm. point of view and also to be able to, to see where I can add more value to my property clients or or, new, or uh, potential property investors. So that has made a huge difference because when they're talking, when they come to me and yeah. they're talking, because I understand the strategy, That's I can it. then give them the legal advice that actually supports what they're looking to do or, or where they are. If they've got it wrong, how we can take a step back to, to actually get things right. I, yeah. I think you've hit then key point on that and in a nutshell I I found that understanding property and the strategies as an entrepreneur yeah. and then reverse engineering and looking at what is the impacts and how can I add value to that journey Absolutely. and understanding the issues they're facing and why they're facing yes. them. Yes. You know, yeah. one of the big things for me was not just under the property strategies, it's understanding planning and PD, yeah. planning <laughs> development. Anyone's watching, oh, you know, gosh, and there's certain yeah. people will know who uh, helped us on that journey. Yeah. And it's constant. Yes, because it's constant, yeah. Ultimately, the people, goalpost is constantly moving, isn't it? And it's how do you adapt and understand that. And yeah. I think that's where the value comes from. Absolutely. So yeah. when you go to a, a person who's specialising and is uh, really enthusiastic and passionate about that area, yeah, yeah. that's where, you know, the yeah. smile, everything comes in because yes. people are like, Wow. Yeah. First thing they'll say, oh, I didn't met a lawyer like this. I haven't yeah. met an accountant or a tax advisor or, you yeah. know, whatever They get me. They understand Yeah, they understand. Yeah, and they're yeah, like, yeah, this yeah. is what you need to worry about. Mm. This is what you need to do. Mm -hmm. That's the value. Mm. That's the return investment on investing mm. in the knowledge and keeping up to date yes. with that area. Yeah. No, I love it. Yeah. I, I, I think one of the other things that you uh, said was, and it was really, uh, really interesting to see is, one of the other parts is, how do you communicate your value? Mm. Right. And, you know, a lot of people see social media is quite big and all the rest of it. But mm. one of the things that I think is even as big and really good for converting mm. is actually getting out in the network. Mm -hmm. Right. So you you mentioned you're very strategic. About oh, yes. Yeah. Give us a bit of insight what you mean <laughs> uh, by okay. being strategic yeah. uh, on your networking. Yeah. OK. Well, you know. Let, let's put it this way, sitting behind a desk doing your day, day job is not really going to get you to meet people. And there's only so much online networking one can do as well. So I, I do that, I try that to point, do. A really good point, because you need to talk about that, but it's good. How you find online with physical, being in person, which one do you prefer or which one do you feel you've got favourable results? Okay. 
okay. I would say they all have, um, they're all beneficial. They all have their pros and cons. The physical network, obviously, that's time, time out of your day. Some could take you two, mm. three hours, the commuting time and then yeah. going there uh, and then meeting people. It's not a case of going there and just handing out your business card like <laughs> confetti, like you're at a wedding. That's not my style of networking. Because you know, I've had people, seriously, where I'm standing there talking to one person, people come and they shove their business cards under your nose. H here I am. And then, you know, they haven't even bothered to say, this is who I am. Say who they are head. and what they do. Get to build a, a, some sort of relationship or rapport. They just walk off. And of course, what happens to that business card? <laughs> doesn't even go to the cupboard, it goes into the bin. Right? Because mm. I haven't, you know, you, you could be, yeah. uh, I don't know, whoever you I, are in the world. I, I don't think it even works hardly at all because no. I don't even bother. When people ask business card, I said, but you're only going to end up throwing the bin. The yeah. business card, right, is not, um, is probably the last stage. Yeah. If is the real key is, are we going to get to know each yes. other? Are we going to invest a bit of yeah. time? Yeah, yeah. I've been to events where, there's a room full of maybe 100 people and I've only ended up with five or six people because I made time to actually listen to the other person, get to know them. That to me, quality over, over quantity, it wins every time. Mm. The earlier, obviously, the earlier part of, the, of business, I, all I knew was just go and hand that business card. As soon as they saw a solicitor, oh, they're going to come and use my services. No, it doesn't work that way because they may already have like five or six other solicitors they're using or... They think, well, what makes you different to, to the next person? You are the person that makes a difference, not necessarily the card. I mean, the card could have all the letters that you've, you may even have a PhD at the end of your, your, your name. They don't, they don't know who you are. They don't know what you can do. They don't know whether it's even going to be a good relationship, a good match. It's a bit like marriage, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're hoping that when somebody comes to you, it's going to be for the long term yeah. and majority of my clients stay for that reason because it's not just the legal aspect they're getting other benefit other benefits when they when they come to me because yeah. I've, ha I've have access to people that possibly could help them and you don't you wouldn't know that until you speak to somebody and actually invest your time in them just I, like you're expecting I, I, other people I, I, to invest on that in point you. that's such a huge value point and anyone's watching the podcast really take that the key of getting an advisor, whether it's uh, in this case a legal uh, advisor so important, is access to the person. That's what you're paying for, not necessarily the activities that they're doing. Mm -hmm. You're paying access to have that uh, person yeah. on your side. If you have issues, right, can I phone and speak to mm -hmm. them? That's where the value yeah. is because yeah. your people don't realize when they come and they're like, I've got no one. Yeah, because Who I've not really I thought it through, yeah. and I've just tried to do a transactional mm. rather than a relationship. Yes, yeah. That's the difference. Yeah, and I think you put in a nutshell, and that's why you get repeat business because people absolutely. now are like, I need access to this person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my approach is very pragmatic. So you know, just to give you an example, during COVID, I had a particular client that had um, she sold that business anyway, but yeah. no, she had COVID at the time. Uh, bless her, I'm glad she's now better. But you know, it was quite bad. She couldn't, she wasn't going out. Yeah. So she was very, very ill, and her business was literally falling apart. Wow. So myself and uh, colleagues in the practice helped helped a lot with with putting things in place, yeah. and. Um, and I'm glad to say that things worked out. Eventually she sold it because she wanted just to yeah. take a step back from that type of thing. But I had to pull in my resources with other people in my contact list to help make that happen. So that's what you get. It's not, it wasn't just about what she came to me for, which was one case, but I got to know her. In fact, there was a, an afternoon where, where I was on the phone for a good 45 minutes. I didn't charge her. She was just crying because, you know, she's she in pain with her illness. She was she felt isolated. And, she, and then she said, oh, God, Maureen, I'm so embarrassed. I've been in business for nearly 10 years and I can't believe this has happened. Yeah. So there's no judgment here. There's no judgment. It can happen to anybody. You made a mistake. Fine. The main thing is you're here now and let's just get it sorted. And I see that time and time again, even with very, very experienced property investors. Mm. Some will come and say, God, Warren, I'm so embarrassed. I said, why? I should know better. I've been in property for 35 years. It doesn't matter. I'm not judging you. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think this is the bit that constantly 
everybody and we, we do it without knowing a lot of people and it's sometimes humbleness but it's getting that balance right we're sort of seeking approval for different yeah. things right to show but often you know being a trusted advisor because that's what many people have, I've done presentations to mm. ones, right sometimes they're not understanding that part because that relationship yeah. they are a trusted advisor yes. they will know something about yeah. the client mm. or the entrepreneur mm -hmm. that they've not shared with anybody yeah, else absolutely. right and it's having that relation giving them yes. that opportunity to have that conversation yeah. taking time because everything goes off that and I, I think whoever out of the the major professions or the advisors uh, who understands that mm. will be more successful oh, not less yeah. because everything comes from relationships yeah, right? absolutely you, you know, the human uh, the human in front of you it's, it's they're huge. not just another file you know they're not just another case we're humans with <laughs> blood <laughs> tears and sweat in our bodies you know I, I, uh, I, I, yeah I think I think that's such a key point and hopefully people digest yeah. that not just and it comes across <laughs> that it comes across Maureen is one of those people who's proactive on that not mm. a transactional relationship mm. uh, is actually a longer term uh, journey on how you build that rapport yeah. hi everyone sorry to interrupt the podcast hope you're getting huge amount of value from this just going to be quick two seconds First of all, to let you know in the comments below, we have got uh, links to free business guides that can help you on your entrepreneur journey. They include uh, exclusive footage from Sky TV episodes that I've done and a whole load of other content in there. Whether you're a growing business, property investor, property developer, or if you want to love the fun of SaaS pensions, please do look at those. And if you still want more help, get in touch, the contact details are below. Yeah. I, I think one of the key things I always ask the entrepreneurs uh, that we're lucky to have on the podcast is yeah. share some of their successes because people are watching and they're like, right, you know, <laughs> what's the key things they've been successful? Okay. How can I learn from this person? Yeah, yeah. And one of the things I always say is, and I think you've sort of explained it, but it's good to summarize this, is that transition, Yes. right? When did the transition from employment as to an entrepreneur, mm. when did you feel right? I've got to go in because you initially did it half-heartedly yeah, half, yeah, and yeah, then you were yeah. like, I'm doing it 100%. Yeah. When did the penny drop on that? Okay. When was that point? It was during the pandemic, guys. Wow. Because <laughs> what did they say? We had, we've had more entrepreneurs and businesses start, it started, more entrepreneurs hmm. during the pandemic and more businesses started during the pandemic than ever in history. Wow. I think. Well, I, I didn't I know that stat, but anyway. no, I'll take your word on that. So Yeah, because... You, I think what the pandemic did in a way was just, it was a conscious interrupt for yeah. most of us to stop. You could be the next person that's got COVID and you could die from it. Wow. What do you want to do now? How do you want the rest of your life to look? How are you, you know, however way you've been living, you've been living, coasting along your nine to five. Yeah, just about, you know, make enough, enough to pay the rent or the mortgage, the bills go maybe on the one holiday a year, right? <laughs> <laughs> but is that really what you want? Do you want to be able to go on holiday four or five times a year? Do you want to send your kids to a certain type of school? Do you want to live in a certain type of area? What do you want out of life? Do you want to put your parents in a, a very comfortable home, buy them a new car? All the things that you've been saying for years, oh yeah, when, when I get to it, when I get, to, when I get this level of salary, when I get this, now is your opportunity. You're at home. It's quiet. No more traffic. No more commuting into London. And there's so much. There was a deluge of information online. Different ways that we can all up our skills. I, I think you've captured that moment. Because I, uh, people talk about disruption. I think I prefer to say, not disruption, reality check. <laughs> reality yeah, check. and I think yes. because I think people just believe that everything is you know, like a process mm. and they just coast through life. And then when they have that reality check moment, it depends how lucky or unfortunate where this happened. Uh, I had that moment in my thirties uh, and I was like, I just, I'm not happy in this. Everyone is different. I'm not, I'm not judging anyone. Some people employment is right for them and it's the right thing and they're super successful yeah. in that. But it depends on what you're like. Yeah. Are you entrepreneurial? Are you willing to back yourself? Yeah. And yeah. when is that point when you are going to back yourself? Mm -hmm. And I think that was the point, right? Oh, absolutely. When you did it. Yeah. So what did you do? Did you say, 
I'm going to stop now with the job. I'm just going 100% into yeah. the thing. Yeah, to be honest, the job was always, I've, I've always, been, I've been self-employed since 2006. Right. So in our profession, pretty much like doctors, we, we you have locum lawyers, right? Yeah. So I was a locum for years. So I was still self-employed. I wasn't employed after 2006. That yeah. how, how many years is that? That's quite wow. some yeah, yeah. amount of time. So you're still, in a way, reliant on your own income. You're working, obviously, with agencies to get you those contracts. Yeah. Um, but when the pandemic hit, because I'd already started the practice then, I've been, I've been a few years in, of course, I wasn't making a lot of money because I was literally no clients, <laughs> no, no contacts as such to kind of say, here you go, here's a, a, a watch of clients. I had to build them. <laughs> An investment... You know, I'm not I'm not awash with money, so it was yeah. part of my own funding, part of my late mum's uh, pension, actually. Wow. So it was, I didn't have any investors. So I had to just literally start from from my own um, thing. And a lot of my friends that are lawyers said, "Oh God, what are you gonna do? You don't get any clients. You don't." Nobody ever said to me, "What happens if you succeed?" It was, "What are you gonna <laughs> do if it doesn't work out?" And again, anybody that's starting any type of business, you find that. That's when you find out who your real friends are, actually, and who your real supporters are. Not just friends, but the family members that you really want to spend some time <laughs> with, because I hear this so much. But you, the, the thing is, one thing that uh, I think differentiates entrepreneurs that are going to be successful, mm. where it's early doors or a lot, because mm. most business, unfortunately, do fail in the first couple of years. Yeah. I don't think they yeah. fail normally due to what they can provide. They fail mm. because the environment yeah. the people they've surrounded yeah, them are uh, they're not they get into their head and then there's everything's a failure yeah yeah, yeah. i had yeah. this as well yeah i had so yeah. many people oh what are you doing you've gone from a top role from yeah. a top bank and all this <laughs> and now you're like and i'm like but that wasn't me. That wasn't you. That yeah. wasn't what's going to, for me, that wasn't the success point. Mm. The success point is what am I going to build, mm. right? And mm. I don't know how it's going to be, but yeah. I know I'm going to do it. And, yeah. you know, yeah. as yeah. I say, uh, you no guts, no glory, and there's a reason Absolutely. for that. And you have to have that. You have to, yeah. And you have yeah. to have that mindset, yeah. that single-minded set. Yeah. Yeah. That's what differentiates yeah. entrepreneurs. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think the other bit is, um, one of the things you sort of told me how you did this, and I see a lot of successful entrepreneurs, is you niched. And yes. we we'll talk about the niche because mm. it's quite relevant. Mm. Property was your niche, yes. right? So yeah. it sounds yeah. like you did training to understand mm. the strategies. Mm -hmm. And then did you gear your services around that? Is that how you did it? Yes, yes, yes. So I, because naturally I was straddling between three different areas of law, actually, because yeah. I'd done different things, obviously, over the last 20 something years. I've been practicing different areas of law. And as a natural progression, as I was learning about property myself, mm. I was thinking, I quite like property people actually and I quite like the environment I quite like entrepreneurs because my dad even though he had a nine-to-five job he also did other things so I think I had that in my yeah. blood anyway to always uh, back crazy. yourself and uh, just the ability to um, build your own thing so that you're in control of your own destiny if the nine-to-five doesn't work out nine to five is good i'm not saying everybody should you know because mm. it, it has its own um Price has lots of yeah benefits actually if you're that type of person um yeah sorry i, I kind of lost my train of thought there the I think, question I, was, think, I think the question was around you know what what actually was the reason why you did the why niche, I niche and, yes. and you went into property um because i think you mentioned your dad being a bit of an influence on your entrepreneurial thing yeah. and how that really helped get your business out there. Absolutely. Um, I realised that in order to provide the best value and in order to get the best out of myself and give the best of myself, I needed to niche, yeah. have my own, excuse me, my own tribe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the yeah, property yeah. people were my tribe. I kind of felt like I connected better with them. And I, I think, I think yeah. that the other thing you were mentioning, which I was going to wait to finish on it because there is a lot, right? You mentioned you had a few different areas and yeah. there was an area she mentioned you worked for the prosecution, oh, CPS. Yeah. I'm pulling well, out of there. You the did. I didn't work for the CPS, no, but I worked for the regulators. That the regulators? So local authorities okay. and uh, so you the did, FSA. So you did prosecute people. Yes, I did for that. <laughs> Don't do that, fancy. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> man. <laughs> But do you know what? Do you know what? You have to know how both sides work. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, and yeah. that helps my clients, if actually. Anyone's, <laughs> anyone's watched Suits, you must have watched Suits, yeah? Absolutely. Yeah, you know old Harvey Specter. <laughs> Everyone knows Harvey Specter. The reason why he's so good, in the, even though, is because he knows both sides. Yeah. If yeah, yeah, you yeah, don't yeah. know both sides, yeah, yeah. how can you be really good, yeah. right? So you have to invest time. So if you had different insights, yeah. right? I haven't worked for HMRC, by the way, <laughs> but I feel I've got them if they're watching. I do don't, don't mind you guys, but you are a challenge, mm. right? But it's yeah. knowing both sides, isn't it? Knowing it? Both and sides, how yeah. you can give the value to the client. Definitely, yeah. So that experience and knowledge actually helps because because I've been on that side, so I know what the other side is going to uh, be coming with. So I can yeah. use that experience and actually uh, help my clients. And wow. So when somebody's going off on a tangent on a case, and I think actually it's a bit of a, it's yeah. not gonna, we're not gonna get it home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very transparent and very real with my clients. The ones that will listen, Love it's it. not going to work. I think, uh, do you yeah. know what? That really will be a great point we're going to have later. If we're going to talk about that. Yeah. One of the things I want to do, one of your top achievements just hit me for quite a bit. And I was like, wow, you saved a 100K oh, to yes. a client. Yes. You know, I know we can't get into the details, yeah. loyal and all that yeah. rest of it, but give a bit of flavor into the audience. How did you save a 100K oh, okay, and okay. that pain that goes right. with that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this particular client, actually, uh, I was when I first started, I was trying to work with him for years and years, and he just didn't, didn't really, I think I didn't really approach things properly, so it didn't, didn't work for him at the time. But years later, he um, managed to contact me again, and this time, he, I think he'd seen a few of my successes, and then, um, yeah, he approached me and we helped him. So he, he, you know, he runs a business with different branches across the UK, and was being prosecuted by um, the local authority for breach of uh, various regulations, so health and safety trading Got standards, it. that type of thing. And um, yeah, so I managed to represent him at court and um, saved him 100k, so financial penalty. Wow. Um, he'd already had the same issues um, going back five, six years, which really the fine should have been a lot higher. But when we tallied everything up after my submissions on his behalf, we saved him 100k. And actually, funnily enough, when we came out of court after the hearing, he said to me, "Oh my gosh, I can't believe it! You've saved uh, you've saved four or five people's salaries. Wow! And those are people with families. Wow! So 100k. Yeah." Maybe somebody's doing restocking, maybe somebody's a cashier, maybe somebody yeah. is in the back office doing different things for his company. So. You know, my work has, there's a ripple effect, basically. That's the I, point I'm making. I, I think you've really articulated value because people don't realise mm. the relationships and have people on your side yeah. who can help you and protect you, whether you're running a trading business, a mm. property business, mm -hmm. so, so important, yeah, yeah. right? In all walks of life. Absolutely. You know, and I'm a bit biased, they always say there's three major areas in life. Mm. One is your health. So having a nice doctor can help i know it's a challenge no disrespect out there but big challenge number two you get in trouble with any authority police courts councils mm. lawyer legal yeah, yeah. and thirdly have to mention this your financial health yeah having a good account and tax yeah. advisor yeah. and I, I know they're two different parts uh, fortunately we look at both <laughs> right is having that protection because your financial is linked to everything, oh, linked to everything. so you've got to Gosh. have this covered yes. and people don't always understand how no. important it is yeah. and you've got to have that yeah. and that's part of your network yeah. amazing yeah. i think you've put golden nuggets there <laughs> I, I think i wanted to just tell people like you know when we're talking on this uh, mm. as we is your approach you sort of shown people mm. you, you know if you meet someone they don't know you yeah from adam mm. right they literally come up to you and they're like how will you make them feel the, the power and comfortable to yeah. be your uh, yeah their, your their representative sure, how do you sure. do that sure it's just part of human psychology isn't it really yeah. so it's not a one size fits all really if you have somebody in mm. front of you whether they're on the telephone in fact since the pandemic the initial um, chats that I have is on the telephone. They haven't seen me, and then we move it on to Zoom because Zoom is just one easy step for before lots that. Apologies. How do they get to know who you are? Do they, is it through social media or yeah, advertising it or could referrals? Be, could be referrals from uh, previous clients or referrals from other contact. Other lawyers send yeah. send me work quite quite a bit. Um, other professionals, accountants, mm. architects. Uh, and then social media, sometimes people, some, in fact, one client recently said to me, and I've been stalking you for the last two years, so he's been following my, <laughs> my things on social media. Love it. Um, so now we're, we're working together. 
And, um, and just on that point, we're tag mine in, <laughs> especially on the social network. Okay. Got my team watching, Anya and Oko, we'll make sure that happens, so she's gonna share that in. So if you do need some help on certain these key measures, <laughs> Sorry, Karen. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, just did different. Uh, but I find that most of the work actually comes from um, referral. Yeah. Um, now uh, we're kind of getting more and more online uh, um, inquiries as well. So social media obviously is working. It's I massive. should really get better at it. In social media. It's continuous. It never stops. Yeah. And um, I guess the other bit I, I've noticed is getting that balance being you know, positive, but also pragmatic and trying to give that balance mm. to the clients. And I yeah. find that is quite a challenging. And I think you'll find it as well, yeah. because yeah. we're having a joke, right? You know, when it's the professions, you know, people don't like hearing the no bit, no. Do they? <laughs> but sometimes they've got to hear why it's no and why it could be maybe yes. But if you do it slightly different, yes. that's the advice. That's, that's the, advice. the, absolutely. And have yeah. you found that's a big oh, driver? All the time, all the time. In fact, sometimes I do turn people away. Yeah. And I had to do that yesterday to somebody that wow. was just not going to listen. And I knew already from the, uh, from the outset that it's going to be there's going to be lots of clashes and what I try to do now obviously it takes a few years to kind of gain that confidence mm. and just say actually you're not going to be the right fit because you're taking away you're sucking out life out of me the energy out of me to give to other clients that will mm. value what I'm saying to them and actually listen um, so in the end I had to say no we're not the right people for you there there's somebody for everybody so I'm not for everybody I, I think you know? that, that's one of the key things when you get a professional yeah. uh, helping you yeah. right it's one of the key parts is actually making sure first you get along with the person mm -hmm. secondly you listen to what they say yes. because they're trying to help you if you don't get along with them and you don't trust them mm -hmm. don't employ them don't get their services no. and also for people she mentioned yesterday we're talking about july 2024 <laughs> at this moment in time so you know so if you're watching this from years on that's what we're talking about yes. but it will be relevant in the future as it was well in the past and as it is the present what she's just mentioned yeah. i think yeah. one of the big things we said and we were joking about is you keep it real i keep you can it see real. it you can I... see it <laughs> and you know what in our professions, mm. uh, and people I keep on mentioning professions because we're entrepreneurs, but mm. we're, we sort of have one suit on at the moment we're talking mm. about mm. in the different professional services, but mm. we are entrepreneurs, yeah. right? But people don't realize that it, keeping it real is a skill in itself. Yeah. So you're trying to keep it realistic. Yes. So we're not talking about this law or yeah, this. No, no. We're talking about how it impacts yes. you, right? Yeah. And yeah. how do you make sure you keep it real with the people? You know, I get to know the person. Yeah. And so they tell me where they are at the moment, whether they're, um, some will just, I think how I speak to people, make them comfortable enough to then open up and tell me literally everything. Yeah. Uh, whether they're married, they've got kids, this property issue they're having, well, how is it impacting them, the quality of their life, uh, the quality of the time they, they're spending with, or not even spending with their children. I remember one particular client, he, I think I was talking to him on, on a Friday, and he said to me, Maureen, I'm just going to hand everything over to you because I want to spend the whole weekend with my kids. I don't want to think about this. I haven't got the headspace. And that's exactly what I did with him to help him. So that's it's, kind it's, of how it, I... And it's getting that balance. Things, and, yeah. you know, people talk about, are you Marmite, right? And we were joking yeah. about that. <laughs> oh, you're definitely not. But do you know what? Mm. It's been really clear with people. Yeah. Because I find people try to be... Um, everything to everybody, to everybody that doesn't work, doesn't work because you need to have your own brand your yeah. style and you know wear it in a nice way Absolutely. Uh, unless you're not a very nice person then i'm sorry <laughs> you know you need a bit a bit of help you're done <laughs> yeah you're done. <laughs> right but you need to be fair and try yeah. to help people but be yeah. honest with them don't yeah. be fake yeah no, don't be do, fake. do you not find yeah, that yeah, especially yeah, fake. everyone's like yeah. oh yeah you can do it and then yeah. you get the nasty surprise yeah, exactly. it ruins your brand it ruins your brand because yeah. you know not, nothing worse than saying yeah you're going to win this case and then you, you know you pay 50 60k and to 18 months two years down the line it was the same it would have been the same if they had told you a month I did, there's no point doing that. I, but you know? do you know what? That's the number one criticism we get for professional services, mm -hmm. right? Whether it's a lawyer, it tends to be quite a lot of lawyers because it's the relation, normally there's right. an issue. Yeah. But they, they, they promise things that they know 
or they should know from mm. the experience they can't deliver, mm. right? Mm. It also can happen in a tax defense, wherever. You've got to be honest with the person, say, look, this mm. is the chance of your success. Mm -hmm. These guys, and sometimes that's a difficult conversation because mm. that's not what someone might want to hear yeah. and you may lose the client. Yeah. But in the future, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've you just mentioned that yeah, client yeah. came back to you yeah. and they knew this person was real. They yeah. told the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've I'm, had that. I've you know, had that. Yeah, you, you, they're you like, oh, do, yeah. oh, they're like, oh, you can save them loads of money, this, yeah. that. And I've watched you and say, and you told me something. And I said, listen, I've been honest with you, mm. right? The other people may not be honest, but it's your choice. Yes. Right? These are the risks I see, right? And I'm, you know, you're yeah. trying to save you. Yeah. If you feel you're going to get a different outcome, mm. it's a very low chance. Yes. You need to know that now. Yes, exactly. And I'm yeah. giving you that answer. Absolutely. And if you feel someone says they've got a higher chance and can deliver it, mm. please go and get that, person, and get that and person. And good luck to you. Yeah. yeah. Because I've been real now. Yeah, and we've lost some clients, but they appreciated it. Yes. And later, if they haven't got those outcomes, they're like, oh, that guy Z yeah. or Maureen were. Yeah, right. we've had that. I'm very transparent. People will come and they're shopping around. They probably have spoken to six or seven other lawyers. And it's, oh, your consultation fees are so high. Obviously, I'm not going to disclose that on this podcast. But I say, yeah, it's high for a reason because I'm having to prepare. I'm having to the read value. the documents before we speak. Yeah. So then I'm giving you the the good the bad and the ugly on that call yeah rather than saying to you yeah you know oh it's mm. free consultation um <laughs> and um i'll just tell you just pay 500 pounds and then 18 months down the line you're ending up your legal fees is probably 30 40 50 k there's no point there's no, no point, point to no that point. Uh, uh, you know and and some people if they're not happy with a certain outcome we discuss it and you know that's no it. hard feelings it's done it, that's it, i can't i can't save everybody i can't guarantee success for everybody because we're regulated we're not yeah. even allowed to do that anyway I, you know, I, I think you've been so, the same here. We don't we don't do free consult because the value and the prep that needs to be done and yeah. the stuff, the value. Because if you're a specialist or you're in the area, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. Otherwise, yeah. you're not going to get specialised. You want to you want to go and get an apprentice or exactly. someone get a free consultation. Exactly. Yeah. And we're going to talk about some of the impacts on business, right? Um, and we're always running out of time, so we're going to get this. Technology impacts for the legal industry. Oh, People are a bit worried about AI. Do you feel it's coming? It's coming, and we and can't bury our heads in the sand. Definitely, we will have to learn. To start, some have of you it. you started any of the journey yet, or are you looking to? Yeah, I'm, because I'm, I'm, a lot I'm of people start, are saying started, lawyers are going to get affected. Because yeah, I mean, we, we will definitely. Our industry will, will get affected. Um, so we need to kind of learn learn these things. Although we can't re solely rely on it. I mean, my yeah. hair um, across the pond. Uh, <laughs> yeah. so I'm, uh, the US. Um, colleagues are probably using it to draft uh, different documents. I, I think that, there's still a, there's still room for us. That that's why the studying, the years it takes and the years to qualify, you still have to use your skills as a lawyer <laughs> to I, do the job. I, I think that's so, where it's going to be. It's about getting information together, yeah. right? It's going to be help you with that part, and then mm. you're going to have the validation part Absolutely. just to make sure. And then it's the value. So yes. there's people skills that was yeah. entrepreneurial. Oh yeah. And yeah, I yeah. think people are going to have to change. So if they just relied on doing manual stuff yeah. they're the people gonna yeah. have to yeah. change you're gonna have it yeah. the yeah. other bit um have you felt brexit's made a big impact or not to your profession you know, business it, it, you know, good or bad one? um i think to be honest you um, know it hasn't made too much of an impact too no. much for, for my own area of work mm. but certainly if you're doing international law or uh, commercial um, uh, law it may have in terms of the contracts that are d being drafted and the clauses to add in etc etc do, do you think it was and it's up to you to answer this because people always have it because then you <laughs> ask that question yeah. do you think it's been good or bad for the economy brexit oh in your do you know what i think we should have really it has it it has its pros and cons but I'm a strong believer in let's just keep everybody together, I think, because we all benefit. Uh, that's just my own opinion. And, but, and I think she's given a lawyer answer. I think she's favouring <laughs> staying in, right? But right, she's giving it away. Like, no politicians. Yeah. There, no, no, <laughs> I love it. Um, I, think, uh, I, I think the other bit, as we're speaking right now, the world is changing the property world. And I want to spend a few minutes, and I know this is what some people are going to talk about. Mm. King's speech has happened, new yeah. government as we speak, July 24, yes. section 24, one, mm -hmm. no false eviction. Yeah, yeah. What's your view on that? Yeah, I mean... The Good whole, or bad and who for? To be honest, it's, it benefits both, really. It, in one, se one really? sense, it guarantees think... renters to, yeah. to actually be able to stay in their properties for... just assures 
the renters or the tenants yeah. uh, that they have a home for at least six months. Right. Um, and then if the landlord want, wants They've to... They've actually, I think, going to change it. I don't know if they've did it. It's not going to be six months. I think it's going to be two years, which is a massive it's difference. A, yes. And you're not allowed to kick them out for two years. You can't, uh, yeah, and, that, that's correct. And there's none, there's no fault thing. Uh, and you think it's going to be positive uh, to be from honest, the tenant, but what about the landlord? I think for the landlord, it can also benefit the landlord if you th if you do things properly as a landlord. That's that's the key message that I really want to get at because to be forewarned is to be forearmed, as we say. So yeah. preparation is the best thing that you can do as a landlord. What does that look like just for the audience? I think taking preventative investors? measures. So if, if you're a landlord that's been in the game for a long time and some of your properties are not where they need to be, you need to really take very, very positive actions now yeah. and try and do as much as you can to get them up to speed get all your documents in line, seek advice if you need to, to make sure things yeah, are drafted agreements. properly, so that if you then unfortunately have to evict tenants in the future, then you're protected because the legislation is fast changing, as you know, there's so much, uh, there's so much of it coming under the government. So be just be prepared and get, get advice. Do, 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 do you think you're going to get, because this is the indication my phone's been ringing for quite a lot on this, mm. right? Do you think from property investors perspective, yeah this is going to affect who becomes a property investor. Absolutely. And current property investors that are good landlords, right? I'm not talking about the, the margin. It is a very mm. small margin that are not mm. good landlords. Mm -hmm. Do you think we're going to lose them? Because there's been a traffic outflow of landlord and property investors. Yeah. Do you think that's going to accelerate or increase because of the bad PR around this? Yeah, there's a, but to be honest, now the professional investor Yeah will see opportunities. Love it. So this will separate the boys from the men, so to speak. So the ones that are... Or girls from the, the ladies. Girls from the ladies, okay, keeping it all, all PC. <laughs> all right, thank you, Z, for that. But, you know, it presents opportunities. Yeah. If you're somebody that's actually looking to grow your portfolio, you're a professional, yeah. perhaps, have been meaning to get into property, mm. but you want to do it the right way. So you mm. want to get the right power team in place. So your good tax advisor, Z, Razak, um, you're, you know, a I good lawyer, <laughs> a good lawyer, a specialist, yeah. Yeah. a good convincing lawyer. So I yeah. always say I don't do convincing. So you need a good convincing lawyer, a good uh, specialist lawyer that helps uh, property investors. Um, like not, you, like, you know, like uh, yourself, I can so say that, uh, yeah. but get the formalities in get place formalities so you've got place. that so framework that, to yes, rely on because yeah. it's going to look like if you go to court, it's going to be anyone who's uh, no, just they're not professional, I amateur, and haven't got that, they're going to have problems, aren't they? They're going to have problems, yeah, they're going to have problems so, for sure. Okay, I, I, think, I, I think you put it in a positive way, and hopefully some people got <laughs> positive because it is a bit gloom right now. Everyone's yeah, like, but I think it comes down to make sure you plan everything and yeah, really think ahead. about yeah. and get the advice. Yeah, get the advice. It's worth the investment then, because what you... What, when you get into property, I always say to people, what did you get in to achieve? Did you get in to uh, escape from your nine to five mm. or build a legacy for your children and grandchildren yeah. or create passive income? Maybe you have a business or a profession and you yeah. want something else that creates that. Don't, don't lose that dream yeah. for the sake of the change in legislation. Just, just get people to advise you, get uh, experts, just like I had to do painfully <laughs> after a few years of doing it my own way and, and trudging along and not getting the right, right advice. Uh, getting having the right people around makes a huge difference because then you can achieve your dreams and goals. I think that we're going to finish the last question, right? Currently, as we speak in July 24, 2024, do you feel the recession, because I think everyone's agreed it is a recession, has the recession um, really harmed our economy or do you feel we're sort of coming out and there's maybe opportunities? What, how have you seen it from the people, entrepreneurs you've been speaking to? Yeah, I, th I think, to be honest, I guess maybe it's just the people I surround myself with. People are seeing opportunities. Mm. Yes, a recession, but also life happens. It's what, yeah. how you deal with it that really matters, yeah. ultimately. And um, I guess I'm not, probably not the best person to ask this, because I yeah. never really see, oh, gosh, woe is me. I'm going to sit down and blame the government, blame everyone else, blame yeah. the recession, blame... Just get up and do it. It's in, we know it's happening. It's not. There's nothing we can do. You just have to get up and look for different opportunities to make your life. Because once you're in control a little bit, you can control things, and you're empowered. You're, yeah. you know. I think uh, throwing up our hands in up in heavens and just 
resigning ourselves is no way to live life really I, or I, really I, as ex existing. You, I think you put that in a uh, you know, nutshell and I think that's what the mindset, mm. always trying to look at the half full aspect of the glass, yeah. not half empty. Yeah. Do you feel, finishing on that, sub question on that is, you, you look at residential and commercial clients, yeah. do you feel the traffic in any area has been affected? Because I've seen a lot of people thinking different around commercial and saying there's opportunities because the value of commercial pricing, because how it's done, has dropped a lot due yeah. to change in demand yes. of it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, a lot of clients that I know, that the, the ones that are kind of building their portfolio, they're going from commercial to resi now, so commercial yeah. to residential, because they're seeing opportunities where people are, the, the there are more pe professionals looking to rent Got that it. may perhaps can't afford to buy just yet. Yeah. So they're looking for good quality properties to live in, nice areas, nice locations, um, diff access to different things really. So those that are in, in the game, if you know where to look and, and how to do things, you can you can actually um, do do quite well. Do you, do you think the converting the commercial to resi is a big thing? Because I've seen that quite a lot. Yeah. Or, it's, I've, I've actually seen a lot of people trying to get commercials where they can see it's a quite um, uh, high traffic area. Yeah. So they're trying to get it because of the tax advantages yes, are absolutely. huge or commercial. Yes, I mean, and you, then doing you probably a hybrid. would know this better than I do. Yeah, they're doing a hybrid, so they've got yeah. flats on top of the commercial premises, uh, so mixed use, etc., yeah. etc. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm seeing that as well, but that's not part of the work I do. I, I get asked a lot about it, so yeah. sometimes I refer them to other lawyer um, yeah. con uh, contacts that I have. Um, but definitely the opportunities are there. In property, there's so many things, really. It's just, it's a, just um, a case of where you decide to, um, yeah, do, go. Do you? Yeah. Listen, this has been amazing. And if you haven't watched this, make sure you like and subscribe because this is what I call the Next Level Finance Podcast with Maria Book, a lawyer extraordinaire who knows how to be an entrepreneur as well. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much Thank for you, all your Zita value. The me. audience Thank are you. gonna get so much value. Please do share this, like and comment be below. Any things you want Maureen to give you a bit more insight or you need different aspects that you want us to cover in the future, do let us know, but I hope you enjoyed Actually, it. I have a present for oh, your Oh, for your before audience. I forget, I was about to be. Go on, yeah. please. So if, if anybody goes to landlordsupport.com, land, sorry, landlordslegalsupport.com, mm. they will get a free ebook of how uh, top five mistakes that landlords cannot afford to make. Wow, wow. <laughs> so they save a lot of money by knowing those five things. And if they want a, a free initial call, we can, we can arrange that as well. Perfect. We'll put that in. The team will put that in. But as again, thank you so much. Thank Big you. thumbs up. You've got to love the Next Level Finance podcast. <laughs> Hi everyone, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, episode of the podcast. We're doing this to add value to your entrepreneur journey, which is have a quick catch up on this, is that just to remind you, we've got free business guides in the comments below. They've got huge value in them for property investors, property developers, SaaS pensions, and if you've got growing bit trading business as well. If you, after you consume those guides that have got exclusive Sky TV episodes in them, please do get in contact with us. The contact details are there and we can help shape your entrepreneur journey and unlock financial freedom. Thank you so much.